Okay. We're live on the chat. How are you, sir? You doing all right? I'm doing well. How about you? Your weekend. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, so what happened was the value that goes on the Exactly. So it's a it's a gotcha. on the chat. Right. So you take the first one and then so a lot of music chair. That's right. We got empty chairs. On it. New chairs. I was going to use one of those, and they look kind of insecure. They look a little suspicious. So, Jackie is all get out. I think it's a great Okay. Oh. All right, I got it. We can make that happen. Do I how lazy good? Yeah, it was not. Um, that was not up to their usual standards. Last minute. We went to How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> We will call tonight's committee meetings in order. The first one up is the Recreation Committee. Joining me is Kat Maddie and Michael Rimmons, as well as our okay. Recreation Director, Barton Kumlinger, and our brand new City Administrator, Seth Duncan. First off, we have public comments. Do we have any public comments here in person or online? You know, visible no, so we're going to move on to reading approval of the minutes. Hope you had a chance to read through the minutes. Our last committee meeting was on September 6th. Move for approval, Mr. Dunn. Clear, second. Second. All there, those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. <laughs> minutes are approved. Next, we'll have reports or communications from city officers. Mr. Mark Hummer. Thank you, Mr. All good. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, last call was the full swing. Uh, we started last week with that. Uh, also, we are still playing football. We have our 11 12 year old playing in Orangeburg. Uh, they won the upper state and uh, set up this past weekend. So, next weekend, this coming Saturday, they'll be in Orangeburg. And Plan for the state uh, for some well. Uh, a couple things the senior program is going well. The budget's in pretty good shape. The global will need to be on uh, the three divisions of the department. Any questions, Mr. Cummings? And I did not move the Christmas tree, Mr. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted more of a reaction from you the other night. Um, just as a reminder, that, that state championship game in, uh, in Orangeburg. This is redemption time for Coach Berger because we came up short thanks to some home cooking officiating when my son was in the same age group and we played him in Myrtle Beach. So, uh, best of luck to our team. Yeah, we hope they'll bring it home. Thank you. We do not have any unfinished business. So, Mr. Cowley, if you'd like to hop on right back up. Let's talk about our next new business item, Sports Center membership. Okay, uh, in the past, I've talked to a couple of you already about 
the solution of the ship. Um, we just, the staff and myself, just not kind of in the direction of where to go with that. Um, was never put in anything in place um, before about retired employees or people that are ex members of uh, the council, ex city council members or mayors. And so I think in the package you'll see kind of. Mr. all good kind of worked together a little bit on that and you came up with a little bit of a city council perspective. And me, probably as a city employee perspective, uh, one would be a benefit for the employees. Uh, scroll through there, you can kind of see what we would like to do. Uh, you know, premierships now is active uh, mayors and inactive mayors and council members. and military uh, is free and uh, staff is free now. The retiree uh, of the city uh, does not come through to be charged in. Um, uh, put in place the years of service uh, that would be available uh, for them to be free. So <clears throat> just trying to get some guidance from and something in place. We, we just never had anything in place since we've been open since 06, 07 uh, down there. We're trying to Get some guidance from the council. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to ask. Thank you. Mr. Commander and I had an opportunity to talk a little bit about this back and forth previously. Um, do anyone like to care to make a motion at this time or have questions before? The mover says the recommendation from the department. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion on that? Yes, sir. You know, I, Mr. Kamalanger, Mr. Kamalanger and I discussed this too. Um, you know, I, I know that there's going to be some some pushback uh, if, if some of these areas are cut. Um, I, I do think that we absolutely need to uh, make sure that our employees have full access because <clears throat> as uh, we have the health insurance plan for city employees, a component of that plan is uh, the wellness program and being able to participate in sports center allows them more easily to participate with the wellness program and we want to make sure that we have healthy employees uh, working with for and in front of the city um, at the same time um, and, and correct me if i'm wrong mark but you know when you're no longer attached to the city your benefits uh cease that is correct so um, you know, I would have no expectation when I'm no longer in office to have the same level of access at the same price point uh, to the sports center that, that I do now. Um, if all of my other benefits are gone, I would assume that that would be part of those as well. So I know that there, it may ruffle some feathers at, at first and we may get a couple of phone calls, but um, you know, the, the sports center overall uh, is a loss leader for the city. Um, this is a way for us to clean up some of uh, those rough edges, and um, I appreciate Mr. Cumberlander and his team and their efforts to, to try and clean up those edges. Any other discussion? Yes, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. I think the other comment I would have is well, two comments. One, we typically do our fee schedule a little bit of a with the budget, so because we haven't had these fees in place, we need to talk about how to handle that. Uh, and then secondly, run this by legal because going down the same path um, as a eventually a post councilman <coughs> receiving a benefit from the city and a 50% reduction would be a benefit. Um, so it's run by legal and then we'll look forward to discussion with you. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds, do you think feel like it needs to stay in committee or can it move forward to full council? I have no problem moving to full council. As long as it has legal support. Yes. Sir. <laughs> when you already made the motion, we have a second. All in favor say aye. All right. Aye. aye. Move it on for council. Mr. Commander, back to you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the other project we got is in our CIP. Uh, it's a fencing project out of Sunset Park. We were voting $50,000 on that. Uh, we've got two quotes in front of them. Uh, one is uh, a local vendor here in town that we had used before that we're trying to like to use. 
Uh, they have done previous work for the city before. Uh, we've done our, we've done city park and we've done all our playground fencing. Um, and you know, I can call them if something's not right. I feel comfortable by using those folks. Uh, they are a little bit higher, but we're still in our budget. Like I said, fifty thousand dollars. I think. Yeah, two options, and I showed Mr. All the, uh, the the options that we have right now. There's no fencing out there. Uh, at one time we did have fencing, but it got taken, it took them down, but we're trying to put it back. And it's merely a safety issue as well and, uh, and kind of containment. Uh, me and the public works director have been out there a couple of nights during soccer and ball, he kicked uh, and snapper for a kid to go chase it. And, uh, and you know, Sunset is a unique park. Uh, it's uh, the way it's set up it is like a runway. Folks think it's a runway or a drag strip sometimes. Or they pull in there, they might be late. So that just gives them uh, more room to go faster. And so we're just concerned about the safety issue of soccer ball or football. Man, a soccer ball um, gets out there and a kid doesn't see the car. And, <coughs> and so that was kind of why we want to put that fence back in place. Uh, and it'll go, the option two will loop us all the way around. Or, We'll tie it into the existing retention pond fence and tie it into the fence. There's another fence story there. And we'll take the galvanized fence there now and put the black vinyl fence. That's what it's all going to be. And we'll tie it in and it'll be basically a horseshoe um, and contain that, that, that whole section of the uh, park. I've also met with Matthew, a worst director, about getting the service equipment uh, in there. And before we set the poles, we'll get in and make sure you get all this equipment that you need to get in there to take care of the field. Thank you, Mr. Cummings. Any questions for Mr. Cummings? Yes, Mr. Madden. Uh, Mark, is the option two from Seegers, does that still fit in the CIP budget? Correct. It's, you got to, we allow 50000 on that the project. And that probably would also be better, not just because it would connect with the fencing at the detention pond, but when you've got events like uh, the egg drop where you've got equipment coming in and the entire field being set up or whatever's going on, to be able to get trucks in and out of there to have those double swing gates, correct? Correct, right. yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? I have one question. Why was there place the fence never replaced? You had mentioned that it was taken down and then in 2014 and it was never replaced. Do you know why it was never replaced? Uh, you know, I'll be a personal here because I have a kid out there playing and uh, you look at things in a different eye when you have your own kids out there playing and it makes you a different perspective on safety. And we just started soccer and I saw a lot of soccer balls going out in the park a lot. So, uh, Probably maybe leadership. I don't know. I can't answer that question. So, thank you. Uh, I believe the recommendation for Mr. Commander is option two from Seagar Fence Company. Was the pleasure of council or committee? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to send the full council with a recommendation of approval option two for Seagar Fence Company for fencing at the uh, Bigger Canyon Field at Sunset Park, not to exceed. Thirty-five thousand. So, here is second. All in. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Let's have it. We're going to full council. Second opportunity for public comment. Do we have anyone in person or online? I see the mayor. Mayor, please come on up. Thank you, Chairman, members of the committee. Terry Mayor, 214 Fairfield Drive, Malden, South Carolina, uh, former chair of recreation and five year employee of Malden Sports Center. I thought I'd take this opportunity to give you a little background on some of this because I, I know you, uh, of course, with Noah's son Mark being here, he has a lot more background than I do. But uh, just to give you an idea of the membership type thing, and it was a little bit problematic even back in 2015. 
when we were trying to uh, uh, implement web control the front desk and had different people come up and apply for membership and free membership. It was fairly easy when I served in the military because there were basically only five active military that you went into. We didn't count the Merchant Marines, the Coast Guard, uh, the National Guard, and those type of things. But things change. Today, those people get deployed. Determining what's active duty becomes problematic for the front desk personnel, <coughs> and I did even then at the sports center because of the paperwork. Plus, we had recruiters with Donaldson Center, the, I'm sorry, SC TAC area would come out here and say, he's taking his oath, here's the paperwork we're filling out. Can he get a free membership and get him in shape before he goes to boot camp? Uh, and we accepted that. Uh, the problem was when they're deployed, they're active duty. So then their spouses are members of the active duty. So that would entitle them a 50% discount also. Finding the paperwork on how to do that was always problematic and getting them to present it. So keep that in mind as we move this thing forward. That could be a problem again. Not insurmountable, but with people mostly part-time that work at the front desk, they need to be clear on what paperwork is required in order to do that. Um, the others I didn't have a problem with, the lifetime membership, you know, I, to me, uh, I've never been a proponent of lifetime memberships in any country, and that would include us. Uh, when we get here to all of Lake City officials, I'd like to see that further clarified by staff because you've got the Planning Commission, you've got the uh, Board of Zone and Appeal, you've got a cultural board, all those aren't elected officials. But whether or not that should be extended to them should be clarified in some way, shape, or form. And I'll hope to see that before it comes before full council. But uh, be glad to give you. <clears throat> opinions later on off the record, but uh, that was some of the things that we ran into when we tried to uh, administer the front desk back in 2015 through, I'm sorry, 2010 through 2014. I had resigned from there before I was elected here in 2015. On the tap. So we we'll see you before me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Any other public comment? Mr. Town Manager. Yes, sir. Um, if I could, based on the feedback we just received from the mayor, when you come to full council, if we could look at the number of folks that we have that are current members of the sports center that are classified currently as active military. Got it. No other public comments? We will go to any committee concerns. What do we say on the German? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned at 618. How are you? I'm good. How are good. you? Okay, I'd like to go ahead and call this Finance and Policy Committee to order. The time is about 6.20. Uh, the date is December 5th on Monday. We're the second committee meeting for all the
Um, this is first item is called to order. Second one is to mention all of who's here. So myself, Michael Reynolds, Ms. Carol King, Ms. Diane Kuzmar, uh, Mr. Seth Duncan, as well as our human resources administrator and finance director, Ms. Holly from Jim, Mark uh, the Mark, HR director. Um, first comment we first item we have is public comment. Do we have anybody online or present who wants to speak in the committee? Uh, so I'm going to be reading a couple of minutes. These are from the Finance Committee meeting from November 7th. Motion to approve as submitted. Uh, as submitted. Do I have a second? Second. The second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving as submitted, say aye. Aye. Right. Carries unanimous. Uh, next item is going to be reports and communication from city officers. Our first report, report from our brand new and shiny <laughs> city administrator right there. Seth. Okay. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, real short tonight. Um, so just wanted to let everyone know that we are setting up a goal setting session in January for either January 6th or 27th. And so uh, Ms. Miller sent out an email in regards to that meeting. We're gonna have Jeff Shacker from the Municipal Association come and help us do our annual goal setting, kind of kicks off uh, our budget season. So uh, we're looking forward to that. We appreciate the replies and we'll get that scheduled and organized and we'll take it from there. That should give you plenty of time to get acclimated. Absolutely. Ready for yes, sir. Um, do we have any questions for Mr. Duncan? Hearing none, uh, next item is going to be our finance director, Ms. Holly Abercrombie. I believe the number is not the committee. Um, the budget should be this time of year. Um, and then this morning, we've been uh, spoken with the owners today, and we should have your report by tomorrow. The final act for, um, for the audit. So. I'll get that around as soon as I get it. Very good. We look forward to it. Any questions for my staff to come before she goes all the way back? <laughs> <laughs> Let's let her sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Senator Henry. Uh, next item is Mr. Mark Putnam. Thank you, Chairman Reynolds, Committee members. <clears throat> we had uh, open enrollment last week for full time employees um retirees and some members of council that have our um, benefits and everything went smoothly uh at the end of the last week we had one that had not gone through we got them through and she's not here tonight but i want to say a uh, special thank you to paul flocks who actually scheduled helped with scheduling that running down people making sure that they got that uh through so i want to say that company class study with evergreen solutions we are on target for them uh, we just finished up with the employee part of that uh, assessment of job descriptions and what they do. Uh, we had a 74.29% uh, uh, return of folks that actually uh, did that. So I know 74, you think it should be higher, but we actually were shooting for about 70%. So we came in a little higher. We are in the section now where the supervisors and the department heads are looking at what the employees said they do. And, making sure that it really fits with the position. So uh, we, we are on target to finish sometime toward the end of January to have that, uh, so we can bring said that to you. Right. Any questions for Mr. Pond? Very good, okay. Thank you, Mr. Uh, next item is unfinished business and we have none of the folks coming this evening. Uh, we have new business. This item is going to be the election commission appointments. Go from the packet item 6A. Any question, comments, or concerns? Mr. Chair, excuse me, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the staff recommendations for reappointment of Dennis Cannon, Jean Benfield, and Charlene Ward to the election commission. 
I have a motion to reappoint this during Dennis Cannon, Gene Canfield, and Charlie Ward to the election commission. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion on this? They've expressed interest to continue to serve, and we appreciate their services when they're uh, free and fair elections are the most important part of what we do. So, any other discussions, comments, or concerns? Uh, all those in favor of the recommendation? Say aye. Aye. All those opposed? There are none. Carried unanimous. <coughs> recommendation for approval for the reappointment of all three candidates. Okay, next item. This item is going to be on for questions and comments, I'm sure, for this. This is the purchasing policy of amendment. It's going to be on page 12 of your packet. Well, sir, it's just an um, amendment to the um, purchasing policy to drop down on the other procurement issues just to make sure. It's crystal clear going forward for all employees if you um, apply for a grant, um, be it local, state, federal, we need to follow their procurement guidelines that they set forth for, for whatever grant or money you're receiving. So this just puts wording in there so that we're, we're, we're certain and crystal clear going forward. Okay. Any questions from Sam Kirby? On this item. Mr. Chair, I'll make the motion to um, board full council staff's recommendation to revise the purchasing policy to include a requirement to follow the procurement guidelines from agencies or entities in relation to the receipt of grants from any such organization. Thank you, Ms. King. I'm going to repeat the whole thing. The motion uh, to board full council with a recommendation of approval. What's before you? Second. Second. And a motion and a second. Any other further discussion on this item? Before seeing in full council, uh, all those in favor of uh, voting full council with recommendation of approval, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. There's a All right. That wraps up our business for this evening. Um, next time can be public comment. Do we have any public comment? Online or in present, <coughs> seeing and hearing none. Uh, committee concerns. Very good. No committee concerns. Do I have a hearing So moved. I have a motion. To second. And a second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 This committee is adjourned. The next the time is 6 <coughs> 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 uh. <laughs> If I can get, yeah, there we go. You want Michael? She had to remind me to do that. Yes. Call the uh, public sports committee meeting to order. It is six twenty eight. December 5th, uh, with me, uh, Mr. Kang and Michael Reynolds. Um, let's see, we're going to start with any public comments. Anybody online? No, sir. Okay. What are your reading and approval of minutes? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to December 7th. Pretty meeting minutes be approved by submitted. Uh, motion. I'll second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 So the light sign. Let's have it. All right. Reports and communications from us. Mr. Fleeman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
this period of time, we should uh, approximately 59% of the budgets. Um, all the six divisions underneath the you know, public works and growler are pretty much 59, 61, 62, 64 percent. So financially, we're right where we need to be this time. Of year. So as that, that's as far as we go with the budget. The only other item, and I, I forgive me for not getting it in here, um, we had in the last uh, meeting pulled back the, the letter to the DOT. I just want to give you an update. That uh, the, they revised, they sent revised plans. I uh, received them just for this meeting. I'll get that forwarded to the mayor, the city administrator. But they they removed the concrete medians in front of the fire station and the sports center, and they they've done everything in the past. So we'll get that circulated around, and it looks like we'll just be bringing up to the next meeting to go back to council. And I think the key wasn't complete, but all the so that, that is correct. Yes, yes. And then that was. Included in the updated version. Very good. Yeah, the media from the fire station is the problem. <laughs> I would ask, you know, Lisa. Well, I mean, we were moving the fire station. I think in front of the, the sports center was, you know, that's what I didn't write out in our, our marquee location. I just, it was absurd. Agreed. You well, might want to leave church and speak right across and go work out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Thank you. All right, uh, unfinished business. Eric Yard, maintenance agreements. All right, what you have before you uh, requesting consideration and action on a maintenance agreement for the Maverick Station or common areas. If you remember, um, we retain ownership of the parking lot and landscape areas while the building itself went to uh, the developer. Developer has asked. Um, we came, I think it was two months ago, they, they came up with a landscaping plan. I, you guys asked me about some financial numbers and show the public works in the landscaping at, at, a, at a cost savings from the recommended contract. Um, they then came back with a, an updated contract or uh, agreement, which you have in front of you, that is also the landscaping stuff, deferring that we'll be maintaining it. But then if there's criteria for maintaining the parking lot um, with to include uh, resurfacing it every five years or resealing it every five years, restriping it, and then repaving it on a 20 year cycle. Currently it's pretty much all new, right? Yes. So that they uh, they paid for the improvements because it was we did, yes. So they, they invested in, and they put the landscaping in and they, they put the parking lot in and then they're asking for this agreement to be executed. Uh, just to ensure that the city will maintain it to the expectations of the developer. So the five years have to pay about ten thousand dollars. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, because you know the, there was some clarification when they said, you know. Resurfacing and they really meant to reseal. Yeah, yeah. Like it wasn't mill and overlay, it was resealing, which is something that we just came to the public works. So we'll have to contract out. Uh, it, it was, and as far as the lining and striping, we could do that, but it probably wouldn't be in the best interest to just contract that as well. And it's about, I would say, $10,000 approximately. That's what today's price is. You know, when we start talking about, you know, this, this is a contract and 20 years we're paying it. Obviously, the value is higher as we move to the future. And then my expectation, based on the square footage out there, is about $150,000 for the repaving activities. Any additional questions? Um, it sounds reasonable to me, but in your professional opinion, is the five year resealing, is that standard? It, it's a little excessive, okay. um, but like you know, with everything else out there, they want it to look right. Right, I get it. We want the outer facing to be as, as nice as possible, and landscaping that parking lot is part of it. Well, I guess my it's not really a, con a concern because we do want it to look nice, but in five years, if it doesn't need to be resealed and the strike still look good, then we're still committed. To do that, we have a uh, 
Happy not possibly adding to say that both parties agree it's not needed. So it's a way to get out of it, but if, we, if they agree, we agree. We don't have to actually do it. I mean, we, we can go back and ask for that, certainly. And I, I don't necessarily think I would recommend doing that. I was just wondering if it was. We, we did, we, we went back and forth with uh, the maintenance schedule. We did, we did put some language in there, and, and yes, you guys will ask, and the answer is yes. Legal review of this. Um, but when it comes to the schedule and the attachment, we put some wiggle word or wiggle language in there that stipulates based on, uh, you know, subject to annual budget and city procurement procedures, which kind of is what you're looking for. It's, you know, we, we, we're going to do it every five years if the money's there. That's kind of my thought when I put that caveat in. And to the point, we want it to look, and that's a, right. that's a showcase, right? Like we want it to look good. We just don't want to do something we really don't have to do. So, and, and we, if in five years we come through this, we can worry about it in five years too. We can make it do another couple of years. I'm sure we have a discussion. Yeah, and I had rather restart 14 months early and it looked fresh and nice, considering. You know that's the entrance to the city, so to speak. So I, I don't want anyone to think that I'm against that. I was just five years just kind of stood out to me. Yes, yes. Um, but like a, just to reiterate, there is some wiggle language okay. in there that allows us to kind of punt on you know, whether or not it's appropriate. Okay. And then additional questions, Carol. Um. I think my concerns are probably very much in line with what you guys are saying. I'm a little bit concerned with sticking to an agreement when you don't know um, whether or not it will be needed in five years or 20 or what have you. But um, but to the same token, we retain ownership of that property and need to maintain it to the same standards we would all the other property that the city owns. So um, nothing, nothing like that. Mr. Chair, um, I would like to go ahead and make a motion to forward to full council the um, Maverick Yards maintenance agreement. Motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll second it. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thanks, son. Aye, Sadler. Looking forward to the full committee. Uh, public comments. Any public comments? Online? Yes, sir. Yep. Yes, sir. Uh, committee concerns. Uh, I have one concern. Uh, <laughs> Christmas time, uh, the lights on the uh, ornaments are the grease. Uh, um, I know. Constantly going, it seems like every year we're always going back with uh, Florence, like, correct? Yeah. Power and that. How are we doing? How are we saying? So, you know, they've, they've done a lot of pole replacement. You'll notice that there are some gaps in the mm -hmm. lights because they've replaced poles, they cut the power, and they never restored it. Um, previously, to you being on council, uh, public works did provide council with a quote to repair a lot of the lighting. John Paul Rick went through and it was correct me if I'm wrong on this thing. It was a hundred thousand dollars. Yes. It was it's yes, it was a lot. <laughs> um, and so you know, we know there are some areas where we just couldn't hang them, we don't have power. Um we did hang on east, um, excuse me, West Butler, um you know, going towards QT. Uh that's a two power issue. Like it it had power and then it fried out. Mm -hmm. and we, we've called in asking if they could restore it. They're, they're all they're just not. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering maybe we should have a say we're in the same how many we have up. So the people are asking, we just point out that they here's a it might make sense because I, I've had a lot of questions about that. Yeah. And it just it is what it is. Uh hundred thousand dollars for Christmas lights for power for the substantial. And I think we kind of state that here's where we have it. 
you know, who's the rules and going would be like to donate a hundred thousand dollars or more to help. Well, well, while we're on the topic, we it may not be the most appropriate time, but but just to put it out there. I think we also may need to start discussing what we're going to do. Uh, these things are very heavy. They're you know excess of 50, 60 pounds a piece. Um, pretty much during a windy event like we had the weekend before last, about seven or eight will fall. And when they fall from 20 feet, they sustain damage. So every year we're losing, I mean, that, that storm from the weekend before we lost seven or eight. So, you know, this happens a few events through each season. Our stock is completely depleted. You know, we, we, we throw some that we were like bending and trying to get back in. Um, but we're kind of at the end of the road with these lights. We go out, they just came to repair the electrical supply. Um, I know we made a serious investment in these, and we'll, we'll maybe do it in the budget budget process here is what, what do we do next? Do we get more of these? Well, we have goal setting next setting. month. Yeah. So um, is this the fourth season? I'm um, losing track of time. No, I, I'd say it's more than that. I think it's more than that. Yeah. So I've been here for three. This was the long stage before I started. Well, this is my understanding. Maybe five. I don't think it's more than five. When they were purchased, even. Mm -hmm. I think I was on that committee, so, so you're welcome for the big heavy grease. <laughs> they are pretty, though. They were five years ago, I remember Brian's funny. We do, I guess we take that as an action for ourselves. So we have a full study, discuss that. Uh, we may also want to look at, hey, what's solar looking like today uh, for these? Because we can't, it sounds like we can't rely on our companies to. Well, then we have it, right? one positive aspect of the Butler repaving, uh, aside from you know the new road we're going to get, is they will be replacing every single power pole on the Dallas Butler. I mean, East Butler, excuse me. So, which I think that was part of the discussion when we decided we didn't want to invest the money and with with Duke and Lawrence on the repair because a lot of those poles were going to be replaced in the yeah, what we there. thought was the near future, but. <laughs> well, with the utility plan, uh, utility accommodation meeting that we had last month, every one of those power poles is getting relocated. So we'll certainly have an opportunity um, to have power on every pole. Possibly cheaper there. I mean, that's what we're doing. Uh, we'll keep that up. <clears throat> it doesn't help us on the roads are not getting anyone, but. Right. Very good. Uh, any other concerns? Committee concerns from public works without leaves being mentioned. Well, I was thinking, I just didn't say those words. <laughs> we're working diligently. We had a uh, working overtime, right? Some guys working over the weekend. Uh, when you asked both machines that we will, uh, two of the three machines that we have broke over the weekend. One is at John Deere getting the, the motor on the uh, vacuum fix, and the uh, Bud Willie and my fleet mechanics are actually putting. The new impeller shaft and everything into the other one, it should be ready to go tomorrow morning. So we'll certainly have one out and then by lunchtime, too. And cross my fingers that the one that we ordered will get here sooner to help us finish the season. Mm -hmm. Is it right after the season? I know that's exactly every time. All right, with that. But the guys will be working on and we'll be putting everything we got to get it. We had a meeting today about using the top of the style of pickup. So we'll get it. Well, I think to that end, you can tell the city makes cleaner and Forrester was less happy. So. All right. All right. What do I hear in German? So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those in favor say aye. Those in favor say aye. What's that? Oh, oh, next is. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Oh, oh. Um, Is that chair back over? Yep. <laughs> Got nothing more. Good. Thank you. While you have the first one, then. Yeah. And those chairs are relatively. <laughs> oh, no. They weren't great when they came. No, they weren't. Oh, really? Oh, they weren't. Oh, they're glad. Let's get my back row. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> yes, sir. All right, it's 644 here on December 5th, and I'm going to need to order. Everybody's here if you want to be here, including the right Reverend Seth Duncan, our new city administrator. Um, first public comment period. What are we here on reading approval minutes? I would like to approve the minutes of September the 6th, 2022, as submitted. We have a motion. Is there a second? Is there a discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Now we're uh, reports communications from city officers. We even claim that we're discussing with you tonight. <clears throat> what do you mean? We'll show that from the letter. Uh, community Development Department uh, budget presentation. <clears throat> Pardon me. The Community Development and Economic Development side of the budget is in line with uh, the uh, expectations. The Cultural Affairs Division, the HA uh, line, is below that of 49%. Uh, but if we apply revenue that is earned from our events back to it, we're more like in the 60% range uh, for that piece of it. I know we don't count revenues and expenditures in the same column, but some key money. Uh, speaking of cultural affairs, uh, the Christmas Carol play, we are sold out completely in on that one. So, I second that applause. Um, revenues from that one should be about $20,000 from that side of it. And we've kept our costs down on that one. So, we should have better uh, 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 balance of revenue to expenditure for that side of it. Uh, we also have uh, December to remember this past Thursday. Uh, it was a great success. We had about 800 people uh, that came out to it. Uh, big thanks to Public Works, Parks and Recreation, and elected officials for being out there. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. We had great tree lighting, and uh, we'll build on that in the years to come. Any questions about activities or expenditures revenues? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. We saw the Christmas Carol uh, on Saturday night. It was great. They did have an issue with the smoke machine and had to take it outside. It was before the um, the water, I guess, if we were in the bottom of that. Too much fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'll pass that along to our staff and to our actors. Anything else for Mr. Charles? Don't go anywhere. Uh, we have no unfinished business, which moves us on to new business permitting for Malden Trail. This is a one two punch. It is the same category of work, uh, but what we'll do is sequential order. So the first is to uh, request for appropriate $25,000 from general fund surplus FY22 for the uh, application and attainment of a permit in Greenville County. Uh, we've seen your docket uh, that um, essentially UIG asked uh, Greenville County if they have a permit. They did, and so the cost to obtain said permit will be $25,000 by the time they have to do all the necessary studies that go over obtain that permit. Uh, like I said, this is a one-time expenditure of $25,000. They are from the FY22 general fund. We recommend that because we would like to have a finished trail. Ms. Holly, I'm going to introduce you. Thumbs up. We have spoken to her and she has uh, identified the funding. Any questions for JR? All right, then uh, what's the pleasure of the committee? I'll make a motion to forward to full council to request to appropriate $25,000 from the FY22 general fund surplus for the application obtainment of an earth disturbance permit from Greenville County. Thank you, Ms. Kuzner. We have a second. Second. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yes, have it for that full council. JR, number two. Yes, this is the second of your one two punch. Because we have now uh, authorized or not authorized, you're recommended to full council via Earth the Service Permit. We must now modify the uh, development agreement that is between the city of Malden and uh, technically called uh, Center Point Land, which is used investments. Uh, you'll see in your packet that there is an example of this and it is also marked up for you so you can see for example on exhibit c uh, permitting is inserted into that scope of work there's another couple of things we need to add to it for example uh administrator duncan and i have looked at the uh possibility of continuing the earthwork out at the trail while we are 
asking for a permit from Greenville County. That puts the city at risk. We do not recommend that city, the city at risk. And so we would like to obtain the permit first before continuing the work on the Malden Trail. And so that line, uh, we'll talk commence in the fall of 2022, which will be completed no later than April 30th, 2023. We're obtaining a new time estimate for construction. And so this development, modification of development agreement is not fully fleshed out, uh, but we hope to have that done and ready for a city council review at that time. So it will be ready for council. It will be. And uh, it says that here in this memo that I drafted up on Thursday that has been submitted to Daniel Hughes for review. He's agreed to the language in here. I'm going to ask him to re review it again when we get all that language put in so that it is kosher. Well, pleasure you made it. Uh, make sure it's correct. It's not like to make a motion to send the full council uh, the authorization for the mayor to execute uh, the modification to the development agreement to use investment. Um, we can do it. These are the efforts to discuss here. All right, there's our motion. We have a second. We have discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. More than that, to council. Second public comment period. Going once, going twice. Committee concerns. Hearing none, what are we here on adjournment? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. We are adjourned at 651. <laughs>
Um, so courts doing good, looking over budget and reviewing everything. I'm happy where we are. Um, we are slowly going through our retention and tickets and policies and, and really slowly going through and have everyone on board. Um, it's going to be a big undertaking, but we're kind of taking it slow. Um, that's pretty much it for us. Um, just working on the court dates, uh, looking to maybe change it up a little bit. And we're progressing in those um, discussions and hopefully making it a little bit better, um, cut down the case loads for the judges in court, the department, and um, also the officers' time in court, and also for the public time in court. And hopefully, we'll be able to work on that. And um, the only thing I will have coming hopefully next month is I have a meeting with the Greenville County Public Defender's Office to talk about um, getting the city in agreement, either an individual agreement or a shared service agreement for the public defender, which the city does not currently have. So I'm hoping to have those numbers to show you next month and see what that's after that. All right. Any questions for our first um, I would like to thank you for your obviously your leadership skills and, and your expertise with your past experience, which you're bringing to all of it to help make us more efficient in, in our process. Thank so, you. Thanks. I've been a short amount of time, but I'm seeing I'm, great progress. Thank you. Thank you. I've had a lot of help. The department's been working on great. Everybody in the city has been great. So, well, thanks to your staff as well. Thank you. Chief <laughs> Miller. Mr. King, Mr. Craig, Mr. All good. First of all, the budget, this contract, we're going to be on the budget. Uh, we had several also that we had to send out at the, uh, I can't say the Bible Center, but the Bible Center, the Wellness Center, and collected toys. And towards Christmas, our officers will be getting a, a couple of cartons of toys, and they'll be uh, handing them out to them for the gift to come see. Uh, I sent out an email a couple of weeks or maybe a week or so ago about Bennett. Uh, he, uh, he is at home. Uh, we, we got a bunch of stuff for him and we're going to take it uh, and do a drive by on his house one night. And also, uh, from the police department and fire department, we'll collect his order so that they can use it for the vending machines when they go back to the U.S. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's uh, January that we go back to the U.S. with my partner. They see this posted on that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, great news. We didn't make complaints on shutting this up on Saturday. So that was, yes. that was great. Uh, uh, also, I'd like to thank the judge because, when, like you said, when she came in, she brought a bunch of great ideas. And that's also the officers make it easier on me. And Mr. Crowley has the shadow systems, the 9 millimeter. The 9 millimeter, we talked about the other nice the shadow systems. And that's, that's all I got. All right. Um, I'll go ahead and add instead of waiting until not really because it's not a concern, but I wanted to thank your department, Chief Miller and Chief at Holmes um, department for um, y'all's present at presence at Ellis Green's funeral last week. Um, it was just very professionally done. Um, the police S4 couldn't have been any better. The fire truck out front, the D21 with the American flag. It was just, it was super nice, very professional, and deserving for that family. So, thank you. Yeah, he was my first mayor, so I didn't want to for that. All right. Any questions for Chief Miller? Thank you, Chief. You might just want to hang tight for a moment. <laughs> Since we have no unfinished business, we'll head on into new business, which is, has your name all over it for the police department change and rent structure. Yes, I'll, uh, I'll go over the history and the analysis on the rent structure. Historically, uh, Malden had a major two captains, lieutenant sergeant, corporal, and officer. At a certain point, major lieutenants were done away with. At that point, the sergeants were doing the lieutenant's job and corporals were doing the sergeant's job. And the captains were removed, two lieutenants were placed in uh, doing those captains' positions. Uh, at this time, with growth and currently with the number of officers we have, we necessarily go back to the uh, traditional setup with the rank structure. And through uh, research, we determined that we need to go back to the rank stru old rank structure with our ever changing growing city. We'll need to expand our rank structure to the supervisor being responsible for more officers and needing to stay in the span of control, which is three to seven, with the ultimate of 35, which is according to the incident command system. 
Uh, now is the time to change the structure because it will not cost the city uh, any physical impact. I'll also bring up the morale because officers can see their room for advancement where at this point there's a very uh, little chance of progression to a leadership position. And I'll just basically go over the duties of the officers and uh, the different ranks. The officer will be responsible, responsible for answering calls to basic law enforcement duties. The corporal will be responsible for training new officers. And we, the person that supervises when the sergeant and lieutenant are not present or busy. The sergeants will be responsible for training as well as they'll be running the, the day to day operations of their side areas, such as the road patrol, detective, so division, and so forth. Uh, the lieutenant uh, will be the shift commander and will take over, uh, will take care of all the administrative duties and uh, will, take, will be the problem solver for the issue that come up, uh, that come up on their side shift, and as well as being there to give guidance, advice, mentor, and uh, and time moving on disciplinary actions. Two captains will be responsible for their individual divisions. And we, we, this has been brought up because uh, this work structure will be uh, build a foundation for the future with the growth that we're, we're actually having now and the future growth. And once again, like I say, it's not a physical impact, it's just basically in the normal positions. Um, Chief, I have a, one or two questions. So, Will the um, the proposed change? Will the captain, the two captain positions, will those be what are currently titled yes. lieutenant? Yes, ma'am. So the duties will be the same. So we'll have patrol and administrative. Yes, ma'am. It'll be at a captain like yes, title okay. versus lieutenant. Right. Okay. And then the lieutenants will be just the road supervisors and the divisions or the department leaders, which are now sergeants. And then we'll, uh, we'll, we've got a bunch of corporals, so we'll have a corporal and sergeant on the ship as well. Okay, that's what I thought. I just wanted to clarify that. Um, and so I guess there's no need for really a job class of restriction changes for any of the positions because it's. There, there's no, a we're only adding captain, right? Right. So, right. We, we, we do have a a, uh, a job description for a captain, okay. which is basically the same as we tend to basically just from changing the numbers on. Okay. Right. Okay. And Mark's aware of all of this, and yes, we've been talking about it for a while. Yes, ma'am. We've talked about, like I said, there's no. That's one of the more things that we looked at was pay, and if there's no reason for the pay to, to change it, or the things that still so. Yeah, I, I'm not opposed, but I just wanted to make sure that those job descriptions were up to date. And then right. in the future, that Mark has that included if this goes before council and is approved in the um, common class study as we move forward yes. for, for those different um, levels. Any other questions from committee? Yes, sir, Mr. Alvin. My question is a similar question I asked the rec earlier. Why was it ever done away with? Do you know why? Uh, I will, I will go back to leadership at the time. This has been about 20 years ago. Uh, the major retired, they did away with that position. Uh, the lieutenants were done away with, basically, the major revived. So that's, that's basically the conflict. Nobody that's here now, but it, it happened in the past. It was not like that. And Mr. Alden, I'll add the lieutenant level, that is me here. We had chief and then it went down. So we only had those lieutenant levels were added less than two years ago. Yes, Great. Thank you for the clarification. Any other questions? I'd, I'd say this is a very good move. I'm going to here. Well, All right. What's well, committee's pleasure? Uh, Chairman King, I'd like to make a motion that we send this uh, change in rank structure uh, to full council. I have a motion for the council for approval. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Mr. Crayling. Any further discussion and questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of the full council to change in rank structure for the model police department say aye. 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 No opposed. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. All right, we're back to public comment. Nobody on Seeing none, committee concerns. <clears throat> just one, sorry. We're going to come back up here. So. <laughs> um, as, as we just kind of discussed it a little bit Friday, 
uh, about uh, selling for um, Sam Harrell, uh, some kind of memorial, some yes, sort, possibly. And we brought this up, and I, I actually talked to y'all about this, but possibly we have new roads that are being built. Some things we can do. Somebody we could put out heat training to everybody, training my wife. And uh, is there some way we can move more on? And it's just a suggestion, and I just wanted to make, you know, least we can do. So if you, uh, so I'd like to make a request, basically, come up with some ideas that we can kind of, uh, I'd like to, if possible, I'd like to do something. Yes. Yeah, we've already got an officer that's looking into another room or like an interchange for uh, another officer. So uh, she's got a little bit of work into that and also uh, I think that's a great idea. Oh, one other thing. Uh, I'll just make two but we put in for- I She's think, not here. Oh, oh good. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, uh, as, as we talked about, uh, about the uh, governor putting the money forward for uh, grants for SROs, uh, right now we have two at the high school, one at the uh, middle school, and we've got one that rose to 22 elementary schools in the senior center, or senior center, the career center. Uh, so, uh, like I say, that they're wide open, the two, the two elementary schools, because it's bouncing back and forth. Uh, we put in for a grant, we thought it was for next year, to pay the officer salary training, uh, it buys a brand new car and everything that, that they they buy for the city. Uh, but it, they award the grants in January, so maybe I'll be coming for you in February about getting about uh, uh, accepting it because we thought it was for next year, but it's probably going to be February. Also, Green uh, Charter School, they're, they're also allowed to put it for a uh, SRO, which at this time we're just going to have officers drive by and do. Checks and stuff on it until we have enough staff and we can get that done. So then all of our schools will be covered. Right. The grant coming in early, I think, is a good thing, not a not a negative. So right. we'll yeah. address that as it happens. Right. Yeah, thanks right. for the update on that. Yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot that I remember we talked about it. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Meeting concerns. Is that where we are? Yep. Any more. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Donovan, for his first committee meetings. Thank you. Record breaking time. What are your on adjournment? Absolutely. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Aye. Yeah, we've had four hour committee meetings. <laughs> oh. We got this now.